Do you see what I mean where I'm like, I'm worried it's too poofy? Is that a concern? Oh, we'll find out. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Wendy and this is Can She DIY It? It's a series where I just try to make stuff, I show you how I do it, and then hopefully you can make it too. I have been hotly pursued by one dress all year. I feel like you already know what it is. The strawberry dress. There was some original plan where I thought I would have to do all the strawberries myself, but today Etsy has really come to the rescue, not sponsored, but I do like Etsy. My package arrived today. Let's open it up. It's time to make the strawberry dress. This dress is pure fantasy. It's not very practical, but I'm gonna try to make it a bit more practical by making this a two-piece. So you can wear the top and the skirt separately, but when you wear it together, it hopefully will look just like the Lyric Matoshi creation. Here are the materials you'll need. On top of the strawberry fabric, I got a pink knit to use as a lining, pink tulle to add fluffiness, obviously, and a 12-inch invisible zipper. Let's go. If you're kind of nervous like me, let's start with the skirt. Brace yourself for a lot of gathering. I do have a gathering foot on my machine and I think today is the right day to use it. Here's a little gathering foot. If you don't have one, I'll put a link in the description. But the way it works is you put your machine on the highest tension possible, as well as the longest possible stitch length. And I'm gonna test what shrinkage that gets us. So I actually had my math wrong at this point. I was testing for 50% shrinkage, but I really should have been testing for 25%. And ultimately, if you don't want to deal with all of this, just use the two parallel stitches gathering method, which has a bit more control, but is much slower. With our gathering calibration done, we wanted to cut out two layers of tulle that were three meters wide and the height of my midi skirt length. We did make the mistake of cutting our first piece 1.5 meters wide, so I ended up doing some sewing to join two halves into one. Same goes for the strawberry, but instead of two layers, just one outer layer, still 300 meters wide and my midi skirt length. Spoiler alert, we did add more layers later on, but this plan was built purely off of observing the original dress. It's just fabric opacity is not always the same. It's time to bake this layered cake of tulle and strawberries on top. And by bake, I just mean gather them together along the top edge forever and ever until you're done all 300 meters. Then Julia helped to gather up the tulle ruffles for the bottom of the skirt. This was a gigantic strip. It was 20 centimeters tall. I really, I don't even know how long it was in the end. When joining the ruffles to the skirt, only sew it to the top strawberry layer. So I have it all separated out here. You just wanna line up the bottom of the skirt with the ruffled edge, straight stitch all the way around, and then gravity will let it flop down. To make the lining, we used a circle skirt calculator that I have linked in the description. And to add a touch of utility and innovation to the skirt, you can add a hidden pocket. All you need to do is slice open the lining and sew the pocket near the top along one of the straight edges. Losing motivation. Okay, this always happens where I try so hard to cram in one last project before summer ends and I can literally feel the temperature's dropping outside and my motivation is also like, why? At one point there was a plan where it was like strawberry tool tool lining was the layers, but we found that it didn't quite have the opacity that we wanted and I don't want this lining to show at all. So we've ended up doing, whoa, strawberry tool 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 strawberry it's almost now two times thicker, and then now I'm all concerned, like, what if it's too puffy? That kind of put the brakes on the project, but we have no choice but to continue and find out. The other thing added to it, we cut out a long rectangle of tulle and just added that as this skinny little waistband. You can see it's like a piece of tulle that was folded over four times. There was a point where it was folded over two more times, so it's way thicker. And I have my lining. We're gonna attach that now. I have a bit of excess fabric, so I'm going to stick to putting the zipper on the side with the pocket first. Do you see what I mean where I'm like, I'm worried it's too poofy? So I started sewing the zipper up here, all the way down to here. Then I realized I need to get the fabric 
right sides together with this side of the pocket and then sew the zipper to this side of the pocket and then it all joins back together at the bottom. At first, I basically closed off the pocket. That was the mistake I made. The left side of the zipper is done. Time to sew the right side. Woohoo! I just need to cut off this bit of excess and then close the rest of the side that is underneath. It hurts me to admit this, but the skirt was definitely the easy part. To the top. There's a really good tutorial actually, if you would prefer to just make this whole thing a dress. That's why I'm not doing it because it's just a repeat of an already existing great tutorial. It's by Madison. I'll put the link in the description for you. Looking back at the inspo. So I want to capture this essence, but make it a functional wearable standalone top. The original has a zipper going all the way down the back. That is where the escape hatch is. But I'm kind of interested in seeing if I can skip the zipper entirely and make it open in the front using the ties as the closure. I'm also curious to make the sleeves a little bit longer. Let's get started. For the bodice, I cut out these two pieces which are gonna cover my back. The front one looks like this. You can use a shirt of yours as a guide, but if you just cut it to this general shape, you'll be pretty close because I've cut them quite generously and I'm gonna sew them together and take away the fabric that I don't need. Okay, closes in the front. The back could maybe drop like another two centimeters. I feel like this is pretty close. I thought I'd be cutting away tons of excess fabric, but... Aha, I did find some adjustments. All right, so the back, I want to sew in about this much so that it's fitting with my back, but the side seams go straight down. And that means roughly got to get rid of the same amount in the front. This is what I'm aiming for, hopefully it all works according to plan, but yeah, shoulder seams should be lined up, side seams should be lined up. I've trimmed the excess fabric from the back and I've dropped it so that it's just above my bra strap. The original dress has a gathered front on top, so to accomplish that I used the lining as a guide to cut out the tool, but added this extra amount that extends further into the middle front. Same goes with the strawberry layer, adding this extra amount along the straight edge that is the front opening. All of this extra is going to be what gathers up. You might have noticed that the tool one was not as wide as the strawberry one. We weren't totally sure how much to add, but we ended up sticking with the strawberry distance, so I did have to cut it out of the tool again. Don't be like us. On the back, uh, sorry, I'm talking to the camera actually. <laughs> yeah. On the back, using the lining as a guide, same size, we cut out one layer of tulle, two layers of strawberries, since one looked a little bit sparse. The front, however, completely different story. We're trying to get gathers to be in the front area, but leave the side flatter. I'll show you how this was done. To help hold the outer edge in place, we just add a basting stitch all the way around so that the layers don't shift on you. First, I sewed the layers together along the side with the armhole. Then I sewed the layers together along this curved line you see here. That's gonna be a barrier to control where the gathering happens. After that, I gathered only the tulle and strawberry layers together along the top shoulder, and then that can be secured to the shoulder with a straight stitch. Flipping the excess fabric aside, the straight edges should all be sewn together, and this should be done for both the left and right pieces of the front. We have two backs. We have two fronts, so we can put it all together. Everything's gonna get sewn right sides together in the back middle and the two sides. The next step is sleeves. So there's been a lot of visual detective work in this project, just me like zoom in, enhance. I'm starting to feel like the original design just has a nicer opacity than the fabric that I was able to buy. I'm going with two layers of the exact same cut of fabric, and I've already added the two long parallel stitches along the top. So I'm just gonna gather those up and then sew the sleeve closed into the tube shape. Sleeves are on. We're just sewing right sides together. I do think I need to put darts into the lining, so I'm trying to figure out the right amount. Like the ideal is that at the front bottom they just meet. And right now, as you can see, some excess. Here are the darts that I added to the lower front. I needed to get rid of nine centimeters on both sides, which meant folding and then sewing these little triangles that are four and a half centimeters wide at the bottom, since 4.5 times two is nine, and then taper off just below the bust. 
Last night, I finished all of the ruffles with the sleeves. I cut these 24 centimeter long elastic bands, attached the little tool ruffle trim to it, and then attached that whole thing to the sleeve, which helped to gather it all up. And the ruffles were also attached to the entire neckline. You sew it right sides together and then sew the raw fabric down so that it doesn't flip. The flipping thing was definitely a problem between the sleeves and the neckline. And on both of those, I added these two little stitches that would help lock the whole thing in place. In the front, we had that like big balloon of excess fabric. I put gathering stitches into the bottom and brought it so that it all pinched in at the front bottom with one little straight stitch on the left and the right of the shirt. I flipped the raw fabric at the bottom inwards, put it down with a straight stitch. So we can finish today. I feel like I've been saying that for the last like week and a half. Oh. The big finish today is these ties. Julia helped make these and it's really a wider piece of tulle folded over many times and then sewn into a tube, which also does need to be flipped inside out, which gives you this like fun little stretchy tube. One piece of tulle needs to be coming out of the bottom front right, and then one piece of tulle needs to be coming out of the bottom front left. Those are gonna get tied together to form a cute little bow in the front. The bottom tie worked out okay. I'm gonna sew that last tie on, and now you will finally get to see the big reveal of my two-piece version of the Lyrica Matoshi strawberry dress of the summer. I know what to do. Find a little spot in the shade. Pink lemonade, pink lemonade. Everything is going my way. Pink lemonade, pink lemonade. Rolling in my back blue body. Everything is a okay. Find a little spot in the shade. Sipping, sipping, sipping. hacks that I added to this to help make it look more like the original dress. You might notice that the top and the bottom don't really have much separation, which helps it look like one complete piece with the little design deviation of this peekaboo bag. Basically, I added these little hook and eye closures. And then in the front, I added this little loop to the skirt, which these ties go through. All of that just kind of like hitches the skirt to the top so that it looks like a complete dress. Or you can wear it like with a little midriff. Up to you. There will be plenty more photos of this on Instagram, at withwendy. And as always, if you make any of my tutorials, don't forget to use hashtag madewithwendy so I can find it and love it. Thank you to everyone who DM'd me and encouraged me, haunted me to make this. I literally had it on my to-do since February and then I kept putting it off because I was like, this is too crazy. I still stand by that. When I went outside to take photos, I stuck out a lot. The next video on this channel is going to be a whole bunch of different ideas to make stylish, functional, CDC appropriate face masks because you know, I love utility. So if you subscribe, hit the bell notification, you can be back here for the masks. Summer, you will be missed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.